the home of the do-it-yourself trucker. When everything goes wrong, you got a redneck in All right, good deal. Welcome back. It's Edwards, Redneck and Eyes, all things trucking and then some. Check us out at redneckandeyes.com. And don't forget to go over there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. You know, we're, uh, we're gaining in subscriptions over there. And uh, with uh, with everything going right, it just, it just feels, feels real cool that we could just slide right on in there and just start, you know, making more videos, getting getting the messages out there to drivers, and uh, and we just gain a lot of notoriety uh, with that too, and we just appreciate everything everybody's doing over there. And just uh, give us give us uh, your feedback on all that, you know, give us a, uh, share the videos, watch them, like them, uh, comment on them, all that good stuff, and we really appreciate that. So one of the headlines I thought was really interesting, <clears throat> and, uh, and you know, you kind of think it's kind of weird that you see the headline, but then you, it gets frustrating because uh, so here's what here's what the headline said. It's a CDLLife.com. It says uh, death of several birds in an oil spill wreck inspires charges against truck driver. And I'm like, what? What the hell does that mean? And you know, you start reading it, and it's just crazy because here's what happened. So California prosecutors are pressing charges against a trucker who crashed near a river, spilling oil and endangering the health of native wildlife. It says the accident happened on March 21st, 2020, but charges were not pursued until this year. It says, according to Cal Coast News, trucker Jesse, what is that, uh, Lasagna? He was hauling oil along Highway 166 through Santa Barbara County when he made an unlawful turning movement at an unsafe speed and overturned, causing the oil tanker trailer to come close, uh, to come loose from the truck and roll into the nearby uh, Koyama River spilling 4,533 gallons of crude oil into the river. Okay, now first off, I, I, I guess this, they're basically just going off the report here. It says, made an unlawful turning movement at an unsafe speed. And of course, it's got like little quotes. So I'm guessing they're guessing, basing that off of a report that was made. And then, the, and then it says, causing the trailer to come loose from the truck. Already right there, you got to see suspicion about, you know, what the hell's going on with that. So, uh, and there's a few pictures and it looks, I mean, it, like you said, it's the, the trailer hauling crude oil. Well, that just means that uh, by looking at the, 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 the uh, container that was, uh, that, that they have a picture here, and it just looks like it's one of those, you know, it's, it's a trailer. It's not a conventional tanker. It's, it's something different. Like you, you see the ones that haul oil, they're, they're more where they are, uh, the outside you could see uh, that they're, you know, maybe a little more structural, uh, where they can handle like a lot of a heavy load or, or a lot of pressure <clears throat> and uh, and then of course they had to come out there with all the little stuff to kind of contain the spill and everything well the, the article just continues on and says two birds a belted kingfisher and a mallard were killed in the oil spill inspiring Santa Barbara County prosecutors to file charges for the deaths these charges include several misdemeanors by violating California Fish and Game Code by releasing oil into the state waterway, and two misdemeanor counts of unlawful taking of a bird, also a violation of the state Fish and Game Code. Vilsania is scheduled for arraignment on June 25th. Okay, so here's what's going to boil down to you. I'm going to tell you. Okay, this article, like I said, not a very big article. There's a couple of pictures, but if if all this pans out, this is what's going to happen. You can say goodbye to truck drivers willing to haul hazardous materials because if hazardous materials if, if a truck driver has an accident and the hazardous materials cause harm to wildlife like this and a truck driver will get prosecuted for it well then i ain't gonna haul it that's all it boils down to i ain't gonna do it, it it's gonna be outrageously expensive for somebody to haul hazardous materials if not only can they get charged for having the accident or you're gonna get charged for whatever you know you're going to do to, to for that cause now i can understand that if you do something that causes harm because you didn't do something correct to prevent the hazardous materials from getting anywhere like outside the containment but but when you did everything you could other than having the accident you know so so i don't know i mean i don't know what do y'all think about that uh because uh i just i just think it's odd that you you're, you're gonna i mean you got charged for the accident 
you know i mean you can get you can file charges against making a long lawful turn you know maybe you can say well that caused wildlife to die well you know what even if i didn't have hazard materials if i you know if if i wrecked the truck out in the middle of the field you know if it if it went off the road and crashed over over a hill and whatever and it ended up catching fire and burning a cut i mean it, something, something you know so that means if a deer or a rabbit got killed during the fire or or the wreck if i ran over something while the truck was skidding off the road can you get charged for those deaths too you know are you going to get charged for that stuff too so so again i can i can understand you wanting to, if there's some kind of like you know environmental code that the driver broke because he spilled but is that the same as charging them for the death because they violated a wildlife code uh, i don't know that's it's kind of weird to me uh like I said, that's it's gonna that's gonna cause uh, a lot of problems on down the line if that becomes some kind of precedent where you know not only are you gonna get in trouble for having an accident, which is probably gonna be your fault, which it probably might be, uh, you're gonna get charged for damaging the freight, damaging the equipment, damaging other property, but then you're also gonna get charged for damaging wildlife. You know, I mean, what happens if you have a wreck and you accidentally because the truck went off the road? you ran over an endangered tree that they have classified you know like like out there when you're hauling out there on, in california and out in the desert and you you know you lose control you skid off the highway and you hit a joshua tree you know they're classified as endangered protected you know what if you're out here in texas and you you know run off the road and you rip through a whole uh field full of uh, blue bonnets you know they're supposedly protected so you know what does this what does this say you know this is this is crazy all right you can't you're you're just i don't know it, you know i can understand driver making a mistake getting getting blamed for having an accident but as a result of the accident he's going to get charged with even more crimes because of because of where he was because he was and because of what they were hauling and that's the other thing you know it has just materials again has materials can cause more harm there's if there's a code in the environmental protection area i can understand it but this is pressing for wildlife, you know, in the, the, uh, so, you know, uh, let's, I mean, go back to it. Let's, what happened? It was, uh, spilled the, uh, da, 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 what was it again? It was the, the, the charges, including misdemeanors, violating California fish and game code. Okay. So th there was a fish and game code by releasing oil into a state waterway. Okay. And then it says, misdemeanor counts of unlawful taking of a bird also a violation of the state fishing game code okay so i can understand getting charged with releasing oil into a state waterway uh, because you had an accident and that you made a mistake it was your fault and this is the result again if he wasn't hauling oil then he wouldn't get charged with this crime so again that becomes like okay now if i'm hauling oil and I have an accident not only will I get charged for the accident but I'll get charged for releasing the oil although I did not intend to release the oil so so again that's gonna have problems with hauling oil or has materials on down the line but then if an animal happens to perish in this accident you didn't the animal was or was didn't you know I mean you'd have no way of saving the animal or whatever. I don't know but now you're saying that uh, because the animal life was lost because of your accident you're going to get charged with the death of that animal so there you go that's and that's so that's what it boils down to and i don't know what do you think i mean should they uh you know already i don't know i just i just think it's kind of silly it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that you're going to have more crimes i mean already like i said the driver made a mistake uh did an unlawful act that's the crime okay you you made a mistake you shouldn't have done that you blame for having the accident okay now you want to relate any charges to that i can see that but don't i don't know i just, it just don't make any sense to me anyway tell me what you think 516-387-1733 and uh give me a shout let me know so that's just kind of weird all right so yeah like i said check us out redneckandknives.com and uh we're going to be pushing on through here and if you uh have anything to add just let me know sit tight we're here and mechanize all things trucking and then some.